Imagine standing on the edge of a cliff with a double-edged sword in your hand. This powerful weapon can either make you victorious or end you right there. Today, we're going to talk about a similar tool, a double-edged sword in the financial world, debt. A tool that can turn you into a wealthy person or leave you poor. How can you wield it for the former? Building empires. The first part takes place in the 1800s, when John D. Rockefeller was just a young farm boy. Rockefeller was born into the mundane life of a farmer's son, with nothing but the clothes on his back and an overflowing imagination. Life wasn't easy, and the pathway to prosperity wasn't illuminated with bright neon signs. Despite being a high school dropout and possessing no Ivy League credentials, Rockefeller had an edge. He had a vision and a dream to construct an empire that would challenge the stars themselves. Rockefeller's journey from obscurity to the history books began with his first encounter with debt, a modest loan from his father. To many, borrowing money is a sign of desperation or failure, but to Rockefeller, it was a pathway to opportunities, a ticket to the big game. With this newly acquired capital, he dove headfirst into the choppy waters of the agricultural commodity trading world. It wasn't long before he spotted an opportunity that glittered like gold, the oil industry. His sharp business acumen identified a problem with the tedious process of extracting kerosene using coal. Rockefeller's innovation was like a breath of fresh air. He replaced coal with gasoline for kerosene extraction, slashing costs and elevating efficiency. This groundbreaking shift didn't just change his business, it revolutionized the industry. And who could ignore such a game-changer? Certainly not the banks. They showered Rockefeller with loans on favorable terms, captivated by his innovative prowess. Armed with this newfound trust and financial support, Rockefeller turned these loans into a powerful weapon. He used them to strategically acquire smaller competitors one by one, slowly and steadily building a massive oil empire. His monopoly wasn't just profitable, it was transformative, providing affordable kerosene to even low-income households. The takeaway from Rockefeller's story isn't just his unprecedented success. It's about understanding the power of debt. When used strategically and responsibly, debt isn't a shackle. It's a key that can unlock countless opportunities catapulting dreams into reality. Inflation-proof debt. Inflation, the gradual increase in prices and fall in the purchasing value of money, is often seen as a deterrent. But it can be a friend to those who understand its nuanced dynamics, especially when it comes to debt management. In 2012, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, secured a home mortgage despite being worth billions of dollars. Instead of outright buying the property, Zuckerberg chose to take out a 30-year mortgage at a surprisingly low interest rate of just over 1%. Many questioned this decision. Why would a billionaire need a mortgage? There are two brilliant financial strategies at play here. Firstly, by taking out a mortgage, Zuckerberg was able to keep his liquid assets intact, freeing him to invest in other opportunities that could yield significantly higher returns than the 1% he would be paying in interest. Secondly, the true cost of his mortgage decreases over time due to inflation. Inflation reduces the real value of money over time. This means that the dollars Zuckerberg pays back in the future will be worth less than the dollars he borrowed. By spreading the repayments over 30 years, he significantly reduces the real cost of the loan effectively making his debt inflation-proof. This is another clear example of how savvy billionaires turn traditional financial wisdom on its head. It demonstrates that with strategic foresight, debt can be leveraged not just as a necessity, but also as a tool to maximize financial growth and stability. Living luxuriously. Today's billionaires are known for their ostentatious lifestyles with their yachts, private jets, and palatial homes dominating magazine covers and social media feeds. Yet, most of these luxuries are seldom financed through their salaries or straightforward income. The story of Elon Musk provides a compelling glimpse into this unconventional approach to wealth. 
Musk, the visionary behind Tesla and SpaceX, sits atop a mountain of Tesla stocks, a veritable treasure trove of value. However, unlike a traditional investor, Musk doesn't liquidate these assets to fund his extravagant lifestyle. Instead, he has devised a strategic game plan that would leave even the most seasoned financial analysts in awe. The core of Musk's strategy is debt, but not in the way one might think. Rather than selling his stocks and triggering a tax liability, Musk borrows against his own assets. He uses his stocks as collateral, unlocking access to funds without having to part ways with his valuable shares. This innovative approach provides Musk with a dual advantage. First, by borrowing instead of selling, he sidesteps any immediate tax liability, a significant saving given the high tax rates applicable to billionaires. Secondly, his precious stocks remain untouched, thereby evading the capital gains tax that would be incurred upon selling. The impact of this debt strategy goes beyond tax benefits. As Musk's borrowed money fuels his luxurious lifestyle, his Tesla stocks continue to grow, often outpacing the interest on his loans. This way, his wealth expands even as he enjoys the fruits of his labor. Musk's approach provides a fascinating lesson in financial strategy. It shows how debt, often vilified, can be a potent tool if used smartly. It isn't just about avoiding immediate expenses or liabilities. It's about leveraging one's assets to their fullest potential while preserving their growth trajectory. The Real Estate Magnates In the realm of high finance, real estate has always been a darling for the affluent. It's not just about owning grand mansions and palatial estates. The true magic lies in how the rich navigate the financial labyrinth of property investment. When they can afford to buy outright, why do they choose to borrow money instead? The answer lies in two powerful financial forces, tax benefits and astute income generation. Let's take a hypothetical journey into the world of real estate magnates. Suppose you spot a stunning million-dollar property, an ideal addition to your growing real estate portfolio. You borrow 80% of the cost from the bank rather than paying the remaining 20% out of your own pocket. With the property in your grasp, you decide to rent it out. The rent serves a dual purpose. It covers your mortgage payments, property taxes, and maintenance expenses, and leaves you with a tidy profit each month. However, the real trick of the trade lies elsewhere in the realm of taxation. Despite earning rental income, you're eligible for legal depreciation allowances on your property. This allowance acknowledges that assets like properties suffer from wear and tear over time, reducing their value. Hence, you're permitted to deduct this loss of value from your taxable income, effectively reducing your tax burden. Now, here's where the strategy becomes intriguing. Even though your property is generating a steady stream of rental income, the depreciation allowances may lead to a situation where, on paper, you're making a tax loss. In reality, though, you're pocketing a profit from the rent, all while your property is appreciating in value. This approach is not just about acquiring assets. It's a strategic dance involving tax laws, income generation, and debt management. It exemplifies the clever use of debt by the affluent to maximize their wealth and minimize their tax liabilities, painting a complex yet fascinating picture of real estate investment. Separating business from personal assets. A savvy entrepreneur knows the importance of protecting personal assets when running a business. This concept becomes especially relevant when undertaking large-scale acquisitions where the financial stakes are high. The story of how Elon Musk acquired Twitter is a perfect case study of this principle in action. When Musk decided to acquire Twitter, he employed a financial tactic known as leveraged buyouts, or LBOs. This strategy may sound complex, but the basic idea is relatively straightforward. In essence, Musk borrowed money to finance the acquisition, using Twitter's own assets as collateral for the loan. By using this method, Musk made a cunning move that accomplished two key objectives. First, it allowed him to make a significant acquisition without depleting his personal wealth or liquidating his other business interests. 
Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, it shielded his personal assets from being entangled in the deal. The advantage of this approach is the reduction of risk exposure. If the deal turned south, Musk's personal assets would remain protected. The only assets that could be seized to repay the loan were those of Twitter itself. This separation of business and personal assets is a significant aspect of risk management in business. Additionally, this approach enables entrepreneurs to make bold business decisions without jeopardizing their personal wealth. It also protects personal assets from any potential lawsuits or claims that could arise in the business world. Remember, as you venture into the world of business and investment, understanding how to strategically separate personal and business assets could save you from unnecessary financial pitfalls and risks. This is the subtle art of financial protection that every aspiring entrepreneur should master. Credit as leverage. The game of wealth is not only about earning more, but also about smartly managing resources. And the credit score is a significant resource. The rich have learned the art of using credit scores as leverage to secure favorable loan terms. It becomes less about needing a loan and more about using credit to their advantage. For the wealthy, their high net worth is often reflected in their pristine credit scores. This isn't just a reflection of their financial health. It's also a tool of negotiation when it comes to borrowing money. Just as you'd haggle for a lower price when buying, the wealthy use their high credit scores to negotiate for lower interest rates when borrowing. The bank or lending institution sees them as low risk because they consistently demonstrate financial responsibility. As a result, they are often able to secure loans at significantly lower rates than the average borrower. Moreover, these favorable loan terms aren't merely limited to personal loans or mortgages. They extend into the realm of business, where wealthy entrepreneurs can secure business loans at lower rates, providing them with an affordable source of capital to fund expansion and operations. This is particularly beneficial for high-growth businesses, where preserving cash flow is key. In a way, they are turning the tables on the traditional debt model. Rather than seeing debt as a burden, they see it as a tool, an asset that can be leveraged for financial growth. The rich essentially make their money work twice as hard, once by investing their own capital and again by borrowing at low rates to make further investments. This underlines a powerful principle in wealth creation. It's not just about how much you earn, but also about how effectively you manage and leverage your resources, and in this case, your credit score. This strategy proves that with the right financial acumen, even debt can be turned into a leveraged tool, playing the long game. Billionaires and the wealthy don't merely play the game of wealth. They play it long term. The difference in their approaches lies in how they perceive debt. Instead of viewing it as a liability or a weight dragging them down, they see it as a strategic instrument. It is this change in perspective, this radical shift in thinking, that allows them to concentrate on the bigger picture, namely growth and wealth creation, rather than being constrained by fear or the burdens of debt. Imagine you're playing chess. A novice player might focus on one move at a time, reacting to the present situation on the board. In contrast, a grandmaster sees the entire game. They plan many moves ahead with a strategy to corner the opponent while protecting their own pieces. This is exactly how billionaires approach finance and debt. They view their financial decisions as chess moves, planning not only for the present, but for the long game. One common example of this long-term perspective can be seen in real estate. The affluent often opt for mortgages to finance their properties, even when they have the cash to buy them outright. This may seem like an odd strategy for those who equate debt with stress. However, the wealthy know that they can put that cash to work in other ways, earning a higher return on their investment. They leverage the current low interest rates to finance their homes while investing their liquid assets in other ventures that yield greater returns. The key lesson here is that, like a chessboard, the world of finance is multidimensional, and the best strategies are often counterintuitive. This long-term perspective, coupled with a strategic mindset, empowers the wealthy to use debt to their advantage, 
transforming it from a feared liability into a powerful tool for wealth generation. Generating liquidity. The affluent class often keeps the majority of their wealth invested in appreciating assets like stocks, bonds, real estate, or businesses. These assets are excellent for wealth creation, but can be rather non-liquid, making it difficult to quickly convert them into cash for immediate use. Instead of liquidating these assets when they spot a new opportunity, the wealthy prefer to borrow money. This way, they generate liquidity while allowing their investments to continue growing. Take, for example, Mukesh Ambani, the Indian business magnate and the richest man in Asia. His wealth is tied up in several sectors, from petroleum refining to telecoms and real estate. Yet, when it was time for his telecom company, Reliance Geo, to roll out its 5G network, Ambani didn't sell his assets to fund the project. Instead, he secured a mammoth $5.5 billion loan. This might sound counterintuitive. After all, why borrow money when you have billions of dollars in assets? But it's a move that underscores Ambani's strategic financial acumen. Borrowing allowed Ambani to maintain the appreciating value of his existing assets while generating liquidity to invest in the promising 5G rollout. He understands the power of using other people's money, in this case, the banks, to fund his ventures. He would rather pay off the debt with the future profits generated by the 5G rollout than sell off his existing assets, which would also attract capital gains tax. The underlying principle here is that maintaining liquidity is crucial for quickly seizing new opportunities that arise. The wealthy understand this, and they use strategic borrowing to their advantage. This story illustrates how debt, when managed wisely, can serve as a powerful tool for wealth creation and preservation.